What's up, guys? How are my vol? How's my volume? I'm doing this live on Twitch. Anyway, I'm gonna see. Like, I've noticed that a lot of someone's noticed for me that I have a lot of unfinished songs. So I'm going to attempt to turn an old song into a finished song. And I want to do it with a lot of songs. Here's the first one. Prong headphones. Okay, I think that's about it. So, I'm hearing a lot of issues with this track. I did this... Uh, January, February, March, April. May 23rd, 2014 was the last time I at least saved on this project. And I'm sure I did this project in like one day. And then I just started a different one or something. So, the first thing I want to look at is... Let's take a look at how I was constructing tracks back then. Alright. So, okay. I have this weird mid-side compression thing going on. So when I look at this, I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to get rid of everything except this ozone maximizer. I love the ozone maximizer. It's, it's just great. So I'm going to do that. And then I have a bunch of instruments. The way I used to do it was that I'd have, uh, like, I just transitioned from Reason 5 to 6 at the time, and my plan was to go ahead and just continue how I used to do it, using the mixer, and then I would just put the mixer in these bigger um, track things. And I don't know why this is called mastering, but I'm going to find out in here if there's any weird nonsense going on in here. I, not really. What I like to do now is give everything its own mix channel and audio channel. I'm going to see if I'm going to have to do that because nowadays I, um, I make a parallel channel for like every single instrument I do. So I'm going to listen to this part real quick. I'm going to start with this thing. I love this instrument. It's a preset for, um, what do you call it? It's called Synapse. Let me see. It's called Gated something. Gated 3. So what I like to do with each track is give it a mix channel and then give it a parallel channel and then after that I change this name because I like to be organized if I hit tab I'll look at the back and I'll put it here I have the parallel channels here and then after that I give it a bus channel which always appears where I don't want it and I name I put a B in front of it and put the name of the instrument so it's B gated 3 Bus gated three is the instrument. So let me see here. This is that distortion isn't being used, so I'll just get rid of it. Uh, the EQ isn't getting used. I'll get rid of it. Uh, that isn't getting. That isn't going to be needed. So let's get rid of that. So this has a uh, reverb on it. And That's really loud, which is fine. But I look at my maximizer and I try my best to not have anything hit the maximizer, really. I'll, I'll turn it up a little bit just so I can see it. But if, if there's a red line coming out of this, I turn it down. I'm 
I'm using I'm using F5, F6, and F7 to jump around between these windows so that uh I don't have to go to like window view this or that. Makes it a lot easier. So I'm just gonna turn this down and see when it doesn't hit the maximizer anymore. If I can hear it. I hit play, right? It's playing? No. No. <laughs> That's pretty good. What I like to do is I'm going to take the reverb off of the antidote. Oh, it's Synapse Antidote. It's uh, The preset is Biosphere. I think it comes with it. I've probably edited it. I've used... I've used that particular, this particular synth in other songs that I haven't actually released because they were from around this time where my mixing needed work. So let's see, just listen to this with the different reverb. So I have a channel without the reverb, I have a channel with the reverb. And honestly, I'm satisfied with that. Um, let me see the delay. Delay should be fine. If there's issues, we'll fix them when we find them. I don't really want to play too much with... Oh, dear God. Okay. I don't want to do this. Do you use the send effects on the main mixer? I actually don't. Okay, let's... I like to turn down the decay on my bass drums. I'm gonna... This is all trash. Okay. Okay. So all this... Gone. Delete. So I, I'm going to do is here's my Kong. I'm going to completely redo my drums. I'm going to grab this. I don't want it to do that. I'm going to grab the two parallel channels and then it's, it's going to... Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this, my old synth. I'm going to delete, delete just the combinator. I'm going to delete... I'll keep the bus channel for now. I'm going to delete the reverb. Clear that. Here we go. I'm gonna move this up here. So what I have is two mixed channels, and I'm gonna copy these two mixed channels quite a few times as needed, and close these up just to keep my sanity. So what I have is this is the kick drums, and I've programmed them to go from outputs three and four, which means that they will go out of outputs three and four and it looks like I already have some side chain compression going on I'm going to remove that because it's going into an audio merger splitter this is very interesting this should not be so this is the input and then it's gonna split the audio which is gonna go to my parallel compressor over or my side chain compressor over here which will get I'll play with that later but pretty much what it's doing is that what's coming from outputs 3 and 4 here whatever that is whatever may be it's going to go to this splitter and and whatever comes out of the splitter there so we have this one over here it's going to that compressor which isn't making any sound well it's it's making it's it's editing a different sound whatever but the parallel the one it's silent right now so we actually want it to be heard so there we go all this is going way over my head <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I guess I am kind of assuming that you guys kind of know what you're doing but then again I'm trying not to Right here. All we need to know is our kick is coming from there and it's going into two different two different things here. I'm going to rename this bass. 
no, I'm just going to put BD, bass drum. And then this is drums. So I have right here, and I make sure that I label all my things. This kit is focus, yeah. I have all my things labeled that I have. Well, I should at least. Which makes it so that I can, it's already there right now, but I can right click this Kong and then I can hit go to track for Kong 2 or whatever the name of that is and it'll automatically create the track for me. But I don't, the only instrument I do that with is the Kong because this allows me to click into my track, my MIDI track. Oh, Inspiring Formula showed me this, but if you hit Control Shift while you're looking at a MIDI track and you scroll wheel up and down, look at that. You, you can uh, zoom in and out. So this is what we've got, and then as you can see here, if I don't use it through a combinator and I use it, I use the track directly from the Kong, it actually shows me the names of the the samples, each sampler thing, whatever you call it, each drum module on the Kong on there. So that's cool. It's a, it's of great help. So right now we're only hearing the bass drum. And I know that there's probably, well we can actually look, that's a snare and we have some hi-hats. So I have two snares here and I'm gonna grab this and I know it's coming from outputs 5 and 6, you click here, outputs 5 and 6, grab this, we'll put it in our next set of, uh, of um, mix channels, I'm gonna call it snares, and here we see it automatically names our parallel channel in most cases, sorry I have these like weird things that I do while I talk. I just feel the need to stretch out my neck sometimes. Don't don't judge me. Ah! So we just found an issue. That is really loud. I'll turn that down a bit. Now, I believe there is no reverb on here. That's the snare itself. I don't I don't like to have I want my snares to sound like that. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna turn down turn down the delay. And I've got like one, two, three, four different snare snam snare samples on there. Snare samples on there. And that one's okay. I just wanted to turn it down the slightest bit. And if you want if you want um reverb on it. Here's what the parallel channel is for. I always keep a parallel channel in case I want reverb so I can do the reverb and the snare separately. So I'm going to turn turn down the decay a little bit so it doesn't stay as long and dry wet down because that's honestly I don't know I just do that. So this is what we've got so far and um, later on you'll probably find that your snare is having trouble punching through the mix. What I like to do is on the main channel I like to do a little bit of uh, compression on it so I'll throw a compressor on it. Compressor on it. I use this one you can use the one that comes with reason it's probably fine I don't know I just I like how this one is set up so I use it Kind of sounds like it's phasing a little bit. I'm not a professional, but this is, I'm just showing you how I do things and how we're going to get to the final product. Something's phasing though. Oh, you know, it's probably these samples aren't really complementing each other very well.
It's still doing it. Hmm. Can you hear, guys hear that? It's like, ooh, pitch shifted. No, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find a different sample. I have a thing called, these samples are from the alt drum pack too. You can use whatever samples you like. Whatever you prefer is fine by me. Don't worry about it too much until you are worried about it. And then you can go, I don't know, man. Find something you like and stick with it. I must be going crazy because none of these sound right. <laughs> I like the hard hitting one. But I do have options here. Actually, yeah, that's that's way better. So let's listen to it now. So what did I do here that is causing this to be so stupidly high pitched? What is happening? Gotta look here. Oh, the pitch has turned. What happened? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what I did here, but it's horrible. Okay. I think there's a way to right click this and possibly reset just this module. Hmm. Because something wrong happened here. I don't know what I did. I'm not sure. I'm gonna grab, here's, here's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy this drum patch and I'm gonna paste this drum patch. Let me know guys if it sounds any different, but output's five and six. See, it's a, uh, something's cut. Like the high end from here is cut. I don't, think there's any EQ on it. That's a curious thing. Unless this is going... If you're going to do tutorial videos, you might want to have a well drawn out plan before each video. Know what I'm saying? I could do that. But the idea of this video is how am I going to fix this stupid song? Do you hear that? Isn't that nutty? Hmm. Output's five and six. I mean, I guess I can just here. I don't like doing this. Well, at this point, I kind of, uh, what I'll do is between each of these, when I do effects especially, I'll try to get an equilibrium between the two so that it sounds natural. If the reverb's not high enough, I turn it up. Throw an automatic on that shit. What is an automatic? Isn't that the, that's a reason one that has like all sorts of different things like tape and yeah, it's that guy. What's an audiomatic going to do for me? Okay. So the next thing we're going to do 
is see where our hi hats are off to. Outputs. Oh, I did. I had some weird processing on those, but at this point, we've gotten a little bit farther in. I'm going to put. Oh, dang it. Lap 2B. Finish these songs, idiot. I'm going to make a new folder for this just to stay organized. This one's going to be YouTube vids, right? This one is going to be Lap B. Because this is like, I think it was, here I can just look at it. This was Lap 2A. This is Lap 2B. Let me... Let me name it Lap 2B because it's the second song I made on my laptop at the time. And this is version B. And I'm curious because I like to do a little bit of a weird thing to my symbols and I want to know if that's present in this mix. If I need to keep it or not. This is the old version. Nope, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, cool. We didn't we didn't make any changes, so I didn't save them. So this is going to be outputs nine and ten, but I have two sets of of hi hats right now, over at seven and eight. I'm curious where the crash is coming out, fifteen and sixteen. So. Output 7 and 8 will go into our next set of mix channels. If you want some reverb and have a nice little subtle touch to it, add a little add a reverb on the parallel channel. Close down the decay. Remember that you can make a parallel channel by going to mix channel. Create parallel channel. And if you want to stay organized, hit Control B or Control G. It will group them in under a bus channel. <clears throat> but these are hi hats, and I don't want. I want to keep a minimum to how much uh, reverb is going on. Otherwise, it just gets messy. So what do we got so far? I want to keep, um, I'm going to move these, I'm going to move all these drum channels over to right next to the maximizer so that I can keep a good eye on it. Some things are, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It's playing, right? No, it's not playing. I went ahead and added a, pff, there's a bug trying to fly into my mouth and added a compressor to this bass drum. I'm gonna I'm gonna compress it and then turn it up with the makeup gain. But you can also do it el elsewhere if you want to turn the volume back up or the game back up afterward. <laughs> but I like to have I like to ideally have the process signal and an unprocessed single signal so that it kind of helps to. <sighs> Like preserve the dynamics of the sound rather than have it flat. Although I don't think we're gonna get much out of this out of that bass drum. Just 
continue turning it up for a bit. So that bass drum should be triggering this compressor, the sidechain compressor. And it's not. And there's good reason for it. So, one of these days it could be worth it to spend a few hours customizing a template so everything you like has it set up and your song isn't always ready to go. I, I, like, that's a good idea. But I disagree with it. I, well, I don't disagree with it, but I try, I try not to do it so that I'm always forced to reanalyze. Like, I'll, I'll make, I'll make one instrument in a song and I'll co I'll copy it and use that as my template most of the time. And that's how I make my templates, but I always make sure that every once in a while I make a new template so I don't have it like saved though because I do it like that. It's in the project per se, I guess. So these drums are like the bass drum is triggering that compressor, which I'm actually going to switch out the compressor. And it looks like, oh no, it's fine. Just make sure that you have the bass, whatever signal you want controlling the sidechain compression to be li like this, like into the sidechain, so it doesn't make any noise and everything works properly. And then I'm gonna call this bass drum split so I don't look at it and be like, oh, what's that? Label it, label it, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, be less likely to get lost in your track or your rack. So here's the thing, nothing is going into it. And as since I use a lot of, um, what do you call them? A lot of, a lot of bus channels. I'm gonna call this ducking because that's what I like to call side chain compression is just ducking. I'm gonna click here next to where I want this to be sent off to and I'm going to click ducking and now we're going to get sound going to this bus channel so the bus gets sent to this bus and then it goes into here it goes to devices and then our chain comes back and it goes from devices so input output or output input output input kind of thing and now, when the bass drum hits, this this right here should start showing us how much it's cutting from that synth that's going I really don't, like, the snare's really quiet still. Um, if you if you have particularly quiet samples like these ones are that I'm using right now, what you can do is to force even more volume out of it. Just add a compressor as one of the additional effects here, and then I just turn the amount down all the way so the compressor isn't doing anything, and just turn up the makeup gain. So I think the biggest issue here is that our snare is really loud. <laughs> so but when we t get it loud, um it starts hitting the the maximizer and I just avoid that especially like I avoid that all the way till the end to where I'm doing the final mixing and mastering.
there's something in there I can't hear that is there. <laughs> Actually, I think this is still too loud. That might be it. So if you want something to be louder, you got two options. Turn something up or turn something down. And if you already have something, if you already have things turned up to where you like them, your best bet is to start turning things down. But like I said, make sure that your limiter at the end isn't getting triggered, like or just barely is. And that'll give you a very good point of reference to um, what you can do with your levels and stuff. So if it's if it's hitting that, it's too loud. If it's if it's not, um, make it make it so that it's hitting the limiter, and then turn it down until it doesn't. And when you have all the elements going on at once, I would not encourage you to mix things. Um, like each track solo because it's going to be because it's going to be heard as a total thing it's going to like when you're mixing at least or mixing mastering EQing make sure you listen to all of it at once so that you're hearing what is going to be heard not just like making these minute changes to something that probably is going to mess up something else so so how how I got to that tangent is that when you have everything playing at once you'll start having like things playing at the same frequencies which will increase the overall loudness I suppose and like say I played a certain instrument a certain level and it wasn't hitting the max the limiter and then I add in another element all of a sudden it does but separately they don't so just make sure that you know there's a nifty master channel compressor on the main mixture that does a nice job honestly like I avoid compressors but you should use compressors um I like to add in my compressor at the end as like a very very subtle touch but he's right you can use it it's right here on your um overall mixer over here so i think it's f f5 yeah it's f5 <clears throat> and then all you do is you go to the master compressor it's right here on the on the right it looks like a compressor you hit on and then you have your set settings to fiddle with but when like most of the time when I compress something I try to keep it around 3 dB that it's taking away and nothing more but sometimes I'll on fringe cases like snare drums that's when I'll go crazier because I really like my snares <laughs> I really want my snares to punch through but if you're doing it right and you're not being lazy you probably won't even have to compress it. Like this one, if I turn this down, also when you compress something, it will make it sound like, it'll make it sit in the mix longer. I guess you could say because wherever, wherever it's limiting or wherever it's cutting at, you'll have to turn it up and there will be a longer period of time where it stays in the mix at an audible level where like it grabs your attention the most i guess because like where it's where the volume is sustained at trust me trust me it does if you try it try it on a crash symbol you'll hear what i'm talking about i might show you i might have to do it later So I'm going to, because now I feel like that snare is lingering too long. I'm going to turn up the reverb a little bit. 
I like my snares to be snappy and not not linger, but I want them to be heard. So it looks like we are almost there. Another thing you can do is you can make you can bus buses and buses upon buses, but if you want to make your life easier, you can take each of these separate tracks. And I'm trying to find out where it showed up, but there it is. Here's the bus for it. This is going to be B snares. And then I'll hold. I'm going to hold shift so that it lands where I want it to, but I'll also do it to the bass drums. Bus, bass drums. Hold shift because it's not going to let you put it where you want it in this case without doing so. So then if we can look over here and if you want it to make sense to look at you can click okay so these are light blue and then we have snares and there should one there's one that says bass drums and then what you can do is change the color of the track like so and if you move it around they should organize themselves not in this case so here it doesn't it doesn't want to do it this is an issue that I have where it just tries to do things for you but my snare bus is over there but for some reason it's not letting me drop it where I want it and f whatever I'm not sure why this one says Kong on it but it does these are the hi-hats. I can make a, a thing that says hi, uh, I can bust the hi-hats together or send these two channels to the bus. And here's here's why. You can, you can separately get the levels between your two channels. Hi-hat is only two H's most of the time. I just want to make sure I can get these the same color. Sky blue is fine. Or it'll do this. Here's what it wants to do. It wants to separate all these mixed channels from the from the bus channels. It's super annoying. But I'll put these all the way off to the side here and then bam, it's organized. So if I want to not have to fiddle with two knobs, I can just use the one knob right there because the snare was a little bit loud. Okay, it doesn't seem like we are having any issues. Mm hmm so one thing I don't like the sound of the bass drum right now I'm going to increase the decay a little bit which just skyrocketed the sound maybe not maybe not That one's really punchy. It's like rumbling my headphones, so I pff, there might be an issue there. But this is what we've got so far. Now our next thing is it's gonna be like now it's not getting sent to our bus channel because I am transitioning this from one from one type of handling of things to another. So what I can do here is over here I have my original, my first synth that I changed to using the bus channels and I'm just gonna copy these. And it's probably going to copy an instrument I don't want so I'm just gonna delete that one. It's not using this. 
It's not using the EQ. It's not using that. Okay, so make sure that everything is hooked up. Send these to the mix channel. And then be gated too. Everything should look good. I'm going to make sure that this is getting sent to the to the sidechain compression, the channel we named ducking. I'm trying to figure out how I can get what combination of buttons I can press to get get my mixer on top okay like that just pull it down because I want to look at this to monitor my levels and then okay so this kind of looks like a mess right you're probably thinking that well you're wrong everything here makes sense no it doesn't make sense let's make it make sense okay we're gonna we want to look at this in one glance figure out what the heck is going on okay so we're starting to find order here or create order here okay we've got a bunch of junk that we're gonna get rid of and now we have our instruments. I'm going to listen to this and monitor the levels. Okay, so there is a piano in there. So we're gonna do the same thing to that. I'm gonna copy all these. Get rid of this. That would be just that would be just creating the same instrument. And I'm gonna track down which piano is being played. And the one called piano verb. Because it shows right there that it's making sound. So by process of elimination, the only one that I'm looking for to make sound. Or the only one being played and that says piano on it that's making sound would be that so these are I'm gonna rename this be piano verb because that's just what we name the instrument so I don't like how this is set up um, okay I'm gonna get rid of that no I can take all of this so for here's another instance of parallel or not parallel um, well, this is parallel compression that I'm using, but ah, get rid of this reverb. We don't need this reverb. I just noticed that this, that reverb is probably here too. I'm going to get rid of it because it shouldn't be there. <laughs> okay. I think, I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is I just want this piano to be played. I'm going to send it straight to straight to the output or straight to the end of the synth the the combinator and the combinator is going to send it to this which is going to make a co parallel channel there and both are going to be sent there and I'm just I already have this laid out but I have no confidence in what I did back then well, I have a little bit of confidence I liked I liked a lot of things but I didn't like the mixing so this is how you can make there's many ways to do this there's easier ways to do this but this is how i've done it since i've had reason five up till now so utilities you'll go find an audio merger splitter you're gonna find a compressor you're gonna find a reverb Um, whatever you prefer is fine. Just don't go crazy with it, and you should be fine. Sometimes I have issues finding things. Okay, reverb. So here's what's going to happen, alright? 
It'd be easier to show you this. I think you'd be more intrigued if I showed, told you what the sound was before I did this, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to split the sound, okay? So, from the, from the combinator, or from the mix channel here, here's how it's going to go. To, from the combinator to the splitter, we're going to take one output, put it into input of the, of the reverb, take the reverb, have it sent to the compressor, have the output of the compressor go back to the, or to the combinator. And then make sure that the same signal, so this is our piano, it's going to go here to the, to the reverb, and this is the audible part. It's going to be split, sent to the reverb, sent to the compressor, and then back. And then we're also going to have the piano get sent to the side chain input for the compressor. Making a YouTube video. I just noticed that my stream is not quite doing what I want it to. Okay. I had, the, I, I had the title set to playing guitar, but I'm not playing guitar right now. I'm making a YouTube video. So, I ate coleslaw. How does that make you feel, bro? So, here's what's, what it's going to sound like, kind of. Piano verbed. So, I'm going to bypass it. This is without reverb. So keep your ears open. So every time when you do this, every time the piano is being played, it's going to trigger the compressor. So if I turn the threshold down, you're going to start to hear what it's doing. And if you turn the decay way up, it'll start becoming more and more. Makes me feel like a slaw loser. <laughs> and if you want to make this crazier, especially for very aggressive electronic music, what you can do is you can take some distortion I like to turn off the body and the cut. You want it to be very subtle, or very, yeah, very subtle, because then it's going to sound like that. So let's add in the normal one. I think I'm thinking arena for the reverb. Don't need it too long. It just needs to be there. So now we have basically our piano set set up. So let's uh there there's got to be an easier way to do this. Okay. I'm going to pull down the mixer. Oh, there we are. That's an easy way to get it. Here's our piano. Okay, looks like our bass drum is a little bit too aggressive right now. I suppose this being very loud is causing issues. Snare is hitting hard. 
Okay. I'm gonna turn down the snare a little bit. Small increments, guys. Once you get it close, you wanna do small increments. If at all possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the compression on the normal sn the snare drum, the section with the compressor on it. Okay, one, okay, one more thing we can do is... So that's... Around 1600 hertz is... Um... What we're listening f for... I gotta find the snare drum, okay. So what does 1600 hertz sound like? High pass, low pass. Oh, what is it doing? I've never done this before to actually hear this, but I'm going to see if it works. Because <laughs> that, if, as you can see, that's where it's loudest. We can probably guesstimate. So that's actually really ugly. It's really ugly frequency. <laughs> I want to... I want to get rid of the low end off of the snare. A lot of people like to um, do high pass filters over like all their instruments because you can't hear anything under a certain like I don't know where it's at but like around 80 Hertz to like 160 Hertz I want to say is around where you can hear the sub this is very fake news this So if you want to get rid of it, you can. Um, so, like, if you're somebody like me that has subs in their car because they want to be loud and obnoxious and just love loud and obnoxious things, they're going to be able to hear the rumblies that they're getting off of all, their, all these different instruments, I suppose. But I'm sure there's arguments against it that are pr pretty valid. Anyway... Still not really, but I can see that every time the snare hits, it's hitting that. So I'm going to continue cutting away at this thing. I'm going to turn it down, add some gain, turn it down, add some game. gain. Oh wait, I'm hit, I'm playing with the wrong knob here. We're not even cutting 3dB yet. 3dB is a good place to shoot for as a maximum amount of uh, compression, but you can go over it. You can you want to shoot to do less. You want to be as subtle as you can, and if at all possible, use the best samples that you can, the closest to what you want to limit the amount that you have to do compression and stuff because ideally you won't have to do any of this but there's really no avoiding it sometimes especially if you're trying to get a certain vibe like I wonder if I did anything to this thing to cause issues. I think we can um, safely go look for a different drum sample.
and not feel too bad about it. think it's got I like I like my I personally prefer to work with drum samples with less drum frequent or less uh, stereo frequencies I'm gonna get I'm just getting rid of this makeup gain I added to it earlier <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Another thing, let's figure out what the hell is this thing is fighting over with. Fighting for... Uh, hey, whatever is in the 160 hertz range, I guess. So this one, I'm going to see if it doesn't affect the sound too much if I cut around here. I soloed something somewhere and now I have to find what I did it. There's some nice snare presets on that rack extension. Um, alt drum pack is very nice. Um, if, I don't know how expensive it is, but like, I want to get more of it, and there is more of it, but it's like a hundred bucks for two and three. But I think I got this one with a, like a bundle. And I'm very glad I did. It's, it's phenomenal. We can, uh, I think... We were looking at that snare before we changed it. Snares I have the most issues with, obviously. Okay, so one more thing I can do is I'm compressing this thing a lot. So I'm gonna make a third par parallel channel for this just to, just to keep the normal thing in there because it's bothering me another thing you can do is like this one particularly you can do the dry mix but I have no like I have no visual representation between the dry and the mix so I try to stay away from that like you want to you want to hear with your ear like you want to mix and master and everything with your ear for sure but if you can got if you can use something like use your find something that you can use with your eyes to narrow down what you're looking for by all means do so but in the end your ear is king because it's music <laughs> You hear, you hear the difference? So pretty much what we've done is we've compressed the snare so that it's you can hear it for what longer or whatever it does so you can hear it in the mix and then we've we've applied some gain so that we've still preserved the the sound that FXP FX Pansion Decam Envelope Shape Rack Extension on Snares. No, I don't. Oh, you were talking about a different rack extension. Oh, I'm sorry. But I I like this one. I'll uh, probably never check it out, but 
F expansion, is it expensive? If if I can do something if I can get something accomplished without spending more money, I'll do that. But anyway, if we add this snare back in without any compression, we'll get this sound where you have the like you have the normal dynamics in it, but you also have the the changed stuff in it. So you preserve the original thing, but you also have the effects that you've changed to it. You probably have it. it comes with mix, mix and mastering rig. FX Pansion Decam Envelope Shaper. Not that I know of. Oh no. So here's still the issue. Like, let's look at it and see which one. That thing might be too loud still. We're looking at the snare snow. Snares still. If we turn down this one, we'll hear the snare a lot better. Another thing I wanted to check was you hear there's sub frequencies in this one. I don't like that. I like my subs to be in the sub. The actual sub instrument. So if I can see anything, yeah. How's this? Let me get rid of this ARP real quick. I don't understand the inner workings of this instrument. It's just a pre, uh, it's just a it's just a preset. If we can look at it for a minute, we might find out something about it, though. The LFO one. Is going to oscillator the oscillator one pan, which is detuned. So weird, and it's only using the sub frequencies. Or it's only using the sub output. Something is, something is controlling the volume of the oscillators here. Don't forget to save all the progress. Yep. Control S to save, do it often. Or if you want, I mean, I'll sometimes I'll use save as when I make a significant amount of progress so that I can go back and look at things like if I change something 
and I want to reference what I had before or just didn't like a change that I made or got rid of something or accidentally uh, got rid of or or here's something I've done I deleted all the MIDI and I deleted all the MIDI deleted all of the li like live recordings because I wanted to start another track using all the instruments from the previous track and have it in a different project file but then I hit control S well I just saved over my old work with a blank slate and if I didn't have backups to that all of that work is gone like all of it not just like a portion of it all of it except for like the instruments and stuff you want to avoid that so hit control save or control save not control save save as control shift s if you want to use the hotkey save as uh, whatever you do like however whatever system you want to do you want to name it bad song well this is bad song a and then the next one will be bad song B and then the next one will be bad song C and when you get around to H J K or L you can name it good song and then export it <laughs> but what that'll do is save you so much sadness you don't want to be sad do you Anyway, that's an interesting concept for a thing. So I guess I know why the sub is the sub frequency is there. Or the sub part of this, however you want to say it. Oscillator 1 and 2 have no volume to them, but they're being automated. The volumes are being brought up and down. And the two sub versions of those synths are what do you call it louder or just always there but I don't like the sub frequencies being on that thing so I am definitely gonna just cut them cut them out so that's what we've got so we have no sub frequencies now now I want to have a sub in here and I have this thing called a sub already I don't know what it sounds like I don't know if it's good it's probably not I wasn't very good at making subs at the time no no trash 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 man goodbye here's what we're gonna do I mean there's it's nothing wrong with it it's just not what I'm looking for so, I'm going to make a utilities combinator, right click, create a Thor, copy these, these are going, these are all going to be routed how I want them, this is going to get copied no matter what the hell I do, most of the time, I'm probably just holding down a key out of habit, so, we will notice that that is there because those effects were in there I'm going to it's a lot easier if yeah. okay for the sake of I'm just talking to myself to be honest I'm deciding whether or not which channel goes where or which channel should have the compressor but it doesn't matter as long as you know which one it is and since I've been putting it in the first of the two um, the first of the two mix channels, we're going to do it like this. So I'm going to call this sub. This is going to be sub. Since we copied it, it's already getting routed to the ducking. So that means every time the snare drum or the bass drum hits, 
our sub is going to be cut. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to find our track for the sub. It's right there. I want it somewhere I can see it next to other things. So this is, we already know what some of our, uh, some of our things are. So I'm going to solo this out too loud. I'm going to put this at like C2. I'm going to give this a sub frequency, listen to it. Sine waves are your go-to most of the time for sub frequencies. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tail. Okay, so you hear, like, if you can hear this on your headphone, like, you should be listening to this on headphones right now. Otherwise, you might not even hear this. But I've added release to the, um, to the sub, so it's going to linger. So it's going to go, boom. After you hit it, it's going to go, um, uh, versus it just going away. So I might get rid of that like later on because it's going to bother me. But I believe if you put it to mono legato, no, it's re trigger. I think it's re trigger because like it would make sense if you said if it's re trigger, it would re trigger everything. So that it wouldn't, it would just get, it would reset its state so that when the next thing plays, it'll, it'll cancel out what's being played, I suppose. Or what, what was there before. And that's exactly what we want. So, um, if we want to sculpt this a little bit more, we can add a square wave. Poly down to zero? Are you serious? Poly down to zero. Oh, right. That would make sense as well. That is really booming, but uh, I feel like we should probably compress it a little bit. Probably going to have to anyway. I turned down the octaves too, so I'm just curious if that makes it sound any better. It sounds exact same if we put if some sometimes it's not like that but if you it's not gonna make it any different sound if you turn like if you turn down the octave on the oscillator and then put it put up all right take the MIDI and turn everything or bring everything up an octave it's gonna make the same exact sound I believe Poly down to zero? What do you mean? That only, okay, here's the thing. If you change the polyphony while it's on mono mode, it's not gonna do anything because mono mode means that it's only gonna play one note at a time. It, it turns it into a monophonic instrument meaning it has one voice.
Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know what you're saying, but the changing the polyphony isn't going to change anything when it's already set to mono on that particular instrument. Other instruments, that might be the only way to get it to mono by turning it down to one, but like, I'm curious, if I turn the polyphony down to zero and then hit that, what would it do? If you put the polyphony down to zero, it will not accept any notes. <laughs> I want to make sure it's on re-trigger so that it stops playing the previous note. Because if you're going to add release to it, you don't. In a sub, you don't. Like he said, you don't want anything bleeding across each other if all, at, all, at all possible. Which is also why... Um, also, if you're gonna, if you're going to sidechain compress your bases and subs, make sure the bases sidechain compressing the subs, not the other way around. I made this mistake in one of my songs. It doesn't sound good. <laughs> At least in my experience. So let's check our levels again. go ahead and turn down the subs a little bit I mean they probably don't need to but I I have a sneaking suspicion that it's just too ah! stop it oh you can click a button that oh if you click that it'll jump you to where it is on the sequencer or on the snare when you're done will you have a before and after clips yeah, I have the original. I saved the original, so I do have the before and after. Yeah. But yeah, I could edit that into the beginning of the video. In the end. So, our piano's not playing for some reason. Let's unmute that. I am very aware that, you don't have to tell me, I'm very aware that the piano was um, not written in key. Trust me, it was intentional, but it doesn't sound great. I gotta head out to handle a little biz. If you're still here in an hour, I'll check your progress. If not, till next stream. All right, bro. I'm proud of you for real. Why? Why are you proud of me? What'd I do? <laughs> you know, here would be a good point, you know. This is gonna be, this is part one because this has been running for an hour, right? So I'm gonna take a break as well. So, We'll be back, guys.